yes, next news about today, and look what we've got today. Today, yes, today, we've got Corora, which is based on Fedora, as you may well know. And we've got a quick look round, or a long look round. Comes as Firefox as a standard browser, and Jigoke has a microblogging client and some other stuff in there. But we're going to get right we're going down into it straight away. What don't you do normally when you first get a distro? You don't go straight and install stuff, do you? Because you want to know what's in there first. And I'm going to show you what just happens when you do that. On purpose, by the way, before anybody says, oh, nee, nee, nee. anyway, so anyway, you've gone, you installed your new distro, you think, oh yeah, I want to install, install these programs that I really want, what should I have? I'll scroll down, there's loads of ticks, don't know what they mean, because I'm new to Linux, you know, as you do, and you find one you've seen before, Audacity, and you click install, and you think, yep, yeah, that's it, I'm going to apply that, because I want that. You're new to Linux, isn't you? and you don't read much, you know, and you don't read instructions or anything like that. And then an error had occurred, and the, the error is because you've already bloody got Audacity, you Wally. That's the reason why. So that's one thing you don't do when you first get a new distro, especially Corora, by the way. Right, let's that out of the way. Let's get down and dirty and do some stuff, shall we? Yes. So, Amrock is your audio player. You get K3B for your burning. Stuff like that. Dragon Play is still in there. Caden Live's in there. Audacity is in there, as we've just seen. This is the free world version, by the way. Yeah, man. I'm for the free world. World of the free. Free of the world. It's all as you would expect. But also in this one, you also get plugins 1 to 9. Now, a lot of them don't give you that. But this one, you do get 1 to 9. Although you can get the extras through Synaptic if you've got a Debian-based one and get all 60 of them or however many there is. Anyway, we'll get some software and we'll do it properly this time, shall we? Yes, we'll do it properly. Now, it also comes with a load of K stuff, as it's KDE, as you'll know. Awful lot of K stuff. Load, load, load of K stuff. But there's an awful lot of stuff that it hasn't got. So what you really want to do is have a good look and see what's going down. Here's AMS in there that it hasn't got. But I don't really want AMS in there, really, do I? No, I do not. I'll tell you what I do want. I want Aurora. Never used Aurora before. It's a nice, really quick... Uh, what am I talking about? It's a really quick web browser. Really, really quick web browser. Really like it's based on WebKit. So I'm going to click to install that. So that's cool for me. Anything else I fancy there? Not really. We go down to apply and it does it again. It's simulating the install of it. it. Wants my password, so it's all going hunky dory. Lovely. Duba suba and all that. So maybe wait a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds. It's a not very big download anyway. When I say not very big, I mean not very big at all. But it's a nice one to use. So anyway, we'll just wait a bit longer, and I'll have a quick drink of water while I'm waiting. Hang on a second. Mm. It's already finished. So that's whoopee doo -dah. Now if you click here, you can go straight to Aurora and open it. So we're going to do that. And there it is. And you see how quick that is? That is fantastically quick. Now it's not all good roses and violets and tulips with Aurora, by the way. Sometimes it does go bang. But not recently on me. Now, as you can see, Google works fine, nice and super fast, lovely jubbly, we talk box into corners. Anyway, I'll get rid of all that. Do I have anything more there? No, not really. So, let's add and remove software or get new software or install software. Now, I've installed this to the full system, and before I updated the system, I went to add and remove extras like I've just gone, and I've installed my NVIDIA driver and the Flash player. For a simple reason, when I did that before, without doing that and installed it, and updated the system, it wouldn't reboot whatsoever. So I had to start again. So I just did a bit of a tip for you there. Yes, and it's the usual quad core machine I'm testing on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the little PDF they put up there as well, too, just to tell you a bit more about it. Where to get help, the forums and the Fedora. Remember, it is a respin of Fedora. And I actually, I could live with this, actually. You know, I'm not a big Fedora fan, but this ain't too bad, to be really honest with you. You've got your software updates set there. Fire, Firefox is your web browser. I've got bad mouth today, haven't I? And we'll go straight to the Carora Linux page. Nice and soothing page. Tells you all about it. Now, it says here it was originally based on Gen 2, which it was. I remember that. That was quite a while ago. But now it's gone over to the Fedora and RPMs and whatever. And they're doing it from there. By the way, this is Corora 14 Nemo, what we're using right here, right at the moment. There is a known version, apparently, but we're using the KDE just for something different, really, more than anything else. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a nice web page. And, yes, nice it is, too. Another drink, sorry about this. Mm. So, if you want to know anything about it, go to their web page. There's quite a few links there. Remember, it's a live DVD. It's not a little one, it's a quite a lot. I think it's about 1,400. I can't remember exactly. 
but it's not an ordinary CD download, so if, if you're not on a fast internet connection, don't even go there. Now, as you can see, you get a Google Chrome as well, which I've installed from their uh, package manager, which is very nice. Works nice and quick. I don't know what I prefer, though, Aurora or Google Chrome. Could be one or the other, you know, who knows. Got some tabs here I closed before, and of course, one of those is going to be Corora, the next page, which we've just seen in Firefox. Now, we open up here. They look no different whatsoever, does it? So that really renders really nice. All the fonts are spot on this time around. Sometimes they don't really play very well together, do they? As we well know. Anyway, applications. Administration. Loads there in their bootloader configuration, back in time, date and time, firewall, LVM, the NVIDIA stuff and your SE Linux stuff. Development, there's quite a bit there too. Usual K stuff that you would normally find. Well, the one at the bottom there, UML model stuff, I've never heard of that one. Education, nothing really, apart from your globe. So we'll open up Marble Globe and see how we're getting down. Looks alright, isn't it? Just scroll in down there, just centering on the UK there somewhere. Get me bomb ready. Let's forward in a bit further, a bit further. It's looking good, feeling great. Mmm, oh yeah. Here we go. Ah, that wasn't very good, was it? So should we restart that? Yes. And we'll start again. Now let's see if there's a little buggy in the program here, so I'll go down a bit quicker this time. We'll go down and down, a bit further, into the med. Ah, we have the bug. So should we click on report a bug? Yeah, 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 next. That'll do for me, yes. Oh, they want to contact me. Okay, I was just reading that while doing the video, so I'm saying, I'll do that a bit later, that one. But yes, that's a bit naughty there, isn't it? It's a bit of a bug in the works, yeah? Never mind. Such is life. Right, under games... As you can imagine, they're all K games, so we're not going to actually go into them. And the graphics you get quite a lot here, in two, including the Gimpy, by the way, and Image Viewer and stuff like that. There's plenty in here for you to play with, including screen capture programs as well, a vector graphics editor, which is Inkscape Lite, I think, I can't remember exactly. So I've tried to keep the video below 15 minutes, that is. So anyway, this is a snapshot, it just takes a snapshot of your desktop, like so, as you can see, and you go to Save As and click save and off you go basically and it'll save it in that location wherever you want it to works all right does what it says on the tin hmm but we're doing that case stuff as well you know. for, well for me a lot of the videos i do are either using uh, gnome or e17 or lxd or xfce i don't normally do kdes as most of you may well know so it's a little bit different for me now we've done the internet before haven't we so we're going to stroll down a bit more for you anyway You've got BitTorrent client, you've got desktop sharing, download manager, instant manager, there's your micro blogging client, you got there. And it's an internet dial up tool as well. For other distros that still keep it in their repos, very nice, but I'm not sure how you'd get on with it, a dial up nowadays. I tried doing one around somebody else's house the other day with a 56k modem. And yeah, it took ages to load the home page, so we gave up on that one and got him broadband instead. Now, under multimedia, as you can see, we've got plenty here, including the Handbrake, the DVD Ripper. Oh, yes. Now, remember, before you do this, make sure it's legal to do in your country. So that's not in America or Japan for a start, OK? Now, you get two choices here. You can do an MKV file or you can do MP4. And you get a choice. And basically, just pop your old DVD in and it'll come up some stuff and you just choose the ones you want and off you go. And it'll rip it for you and you can play via computer and you then burn to a DVD or CD, whatever, afterwards. So you've got your media player, you've got caffeine as well, and Juck for a music player. I've got the QT record my desktop I'm using to do the video I'm using now. So yeah, it's super cool, isn't it? Caden Live is here and in the box and in the mix. Lovely. Under Office. Now, we have LibreOffice in here. Yes, we do. It's one of the first ones to get LibreOffice. Not the first, but one of the first to get in this stuff, if you know what I mean. Another drink, sorry about that. Mm. And as you can see, it comes up and runs rather nice. Everything's all here, where it should be, so I thought, yeah, super cool. Look at the fonts, yeah, see what sort of fonts we've got, shall we? Yeah, scroll, scroll, scroll. They're all here that you're going to have to use. Obviously, if you want some different fonts, you know what to do or how to get them. Of course you do, but I did not tell you much more about it. We go down to about LibreOffice here. It's 3.3.2, so that's rather nice, isn't it? Yeah, super duper. Okay, should we get rid of that? Yeah, let's get rid of that. Clicky over there, -y. that's good for me. Next. Should we go back to office and open something else up? Yes, okay, we will. I'll tell you what, open the spreadsheet up. No, that was super cool. Right? See how fast that was? I was? This is what I'm saying to you. I could actually live with this as a KD. Although KD is not top of my agenda, I could actually get used to this one. It ain't too bad at all, to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm not used to all the widgets and all that, and I'm not really into all that. But hey, 
it's not a bad system actually. Now it's installed properly, if you know what I mean. Anyway, in this section we get desktop sharing, a disk burning, drop down, Fedora Live, USB creator, a file manager. Also, it's the Keynote Info Center. That tells you what machine I'm using to do it with. That tells you the version of Linux I've got. So that's 2635113. Oh, 64 bit, I forgot to tell you that. So it's the old quad core. It's called Puppy PC because I was installing it on a Puppy PC before and I just kept the name, it was easier. This is my memory, total free memory, my physical memory, and the swap space that I'm not using whatsoever, which is rather super we do pretty, don't you think? Yeah, of course you do. So yeah, that's nice to look at. We're numbers going, and it's all working, it's showing it's all working, but I rather like it. It's a nice bit to show you, really, isn't it? Well, I thought it was anyway. Yeah. So anyway, we're getting near the end of the video here, so I'm just going to do a few little things for you, and then we're going to stop, and you can make your own decision up. Because remember, it is a big download, so if you want to go with it, you know, you're going to have to consider either buying it or going to an internet cafe that's got super, super fast broadband, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so we'll close that. Next, where shall we go? I'll tell you what. We'll go and do some stuff with the widgets. Just for the end of the vid, though, we're going to go to add a widget. And as you know, it all opens up down the bottom here. <clears throat> Excuse me. You just drag and drop to where you want to go, really. So we can get them in it. No, we're going to go that, that way. Go that way. So we'll go and find something and put it on the desktop so you can see what, how to do it and how it works. Most of you will know how to do this and how it works. But if you're new to Linux or anything like this, Yes. Some of you may say who've come over from Windows, oh, that's like Windows 7. Oh, I'm afraid, I'm, I'm a big to differ here. We was there before you. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, the last little app there, I don't particularly like that app myself, but hey, it does the job. There's lots and lots of apps you can choose to put on, or widgets as we call them, to put on your desktop to do stuff that you want to do. So yeah, that's all right, isn't it? Right, we're getting near the end. I said that. There we go. We're just going to do a couple more things. Mm. Excuse me, for you to that, yeah, some bacon I had today. You get a couple of terminals as well. Your wallet's management tool is also there. If we go down to utilities again, you get advanced text editor. Automatic mouse clicker. Oh, yeah, okay. Some pop up notes, a speech synthesizer front end, a system cleaner as well. What else I'm going to show you up here? Some bits I missed, you see. A remote desktop client as well. Don't forget that. That's also included as standard, and you don't have to add none of that. What we're going to do though is go over to the tube, make sure that works. I nearly forgot about that, didn't I? Naughty, naughty, naughty. Very naughty. Oh, yes. Click OK. So we put me in, yeah, we put me in, make sure everything's working, hunky dory. So, sneaky of the Linux goes in the top there. Click him down. This is some of my videos. What we're going to do, we're just going to click one to make sure it works. OK, I should think. Yeah, we'll do that. What once we do? One down here, that'll do. That'll do for me. Oh, you get you got the flash blocker there as well to start with. Don't forget that. You have to click in the middle so you want to watch. But that's fine by me. Yeah, video's working fine in flash. It works full screen, no problem at all whatsoever. So yeah, very happy about that. Remember, you have to install this yourself at the beginning of the install. Well, after you've installed the, the main system, then install this and your drivers. Do not forget to do that. Otherwise, it ain't going to work, is it? Right. To say, round it up, shall we say? As for a KDE client, it's 5 out of 5. For me personally, 4.5 out of 5. Mm, never mind. Sneaky Linux going out.